people like Ben Shapiro, who is an American citizen, and wondering, are you really though? Or are you actually uh, really an agent for the state of Israel pretending and masquerading as an American citizen? And maybe you should be living somewhere else, or maybe you should at least be labeled, uh, outright labeled. I mean, look, if people working for RT are being labeled as Russian state media, then why aren't people like Ben Shapiro being labeled as Israeli state media? Because the Daily Wire is not state funded by the country of Israel and is not taking a media order by the Israeli government. What do you mean? So people are starting to question the loyalty of Jews. People are starting to question the, the honesty of Jews. People are starting to question, um, you know, these, these the, the, the history of Jews. And that could be the goal. <laughs> what? Wait, is the Daily Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli media platform? Oh, I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. It's probably... So Elon Musk is under fire for allowing Holocaust denialism to run rampant on Twitter. Let me just give you an example of what this looks like. Uh, this is Jake Shields. He has grown a, quite a lot. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this guy. Kill me. This guy. Example of what this looks like. Uh, this is Jake Shields. He has grown a, quite a large audience since um, the war in Gaza. And he has been speaking up against the Israelis quite a bit, but now he has. She, he's grown quite a following since the war in Gaza. Yes, Jake Shields, our on the ground Middle Eastern correspondent. Del and quite a large audience since um, the war in Gaza. And he has been speaking up against the Israelis quite a bit, but now he has delved into talking about the Holocaust. This is one of the posts. What did Destiny say about this lady again? She's got like the world record for living without a brain. I, dude, I, what did I even debate her on? Oh God, she just is, she's bought into every anti-US conspiracy. She's like a Russia bot. Destiny Kim Iverson. Oh, on voting Biden or not, I guess. Mental issues. Oh, like tens of thousands, hundreds. Oh God. He says, I've done a little digging and got to the, oh, sorry, this is, he says, these are the actual photos from the gas chambers in Auschwitz death camp. The Nazi technology was extremely advanced and decades ahead of modern gas chambers. So he's sort of, you know, he's being facetious on this. These are wooden doors with windows. This is something that has been discussed often in um, Holocaust denialism communities where they say, how could these possibly be gas chambers when these are wooden doors and these are windows? Um, and then Jake clarifies, and that's what I was reading here, but this is the clarification here. He says, um, he says, um, I've done a little digging and I've gotten to the bottom of why they have wooden doors. The gas chamber at Auschwitz was never actually a gas chamber. It was built in the 1950s by Soviets to look like they assumed it would look. I'm sure they will add some community note, but this is act. Oh, so... The Holocaust was actually faked by the Soviets with the Soviets consent or because or they just built a replica thinking it was real. I don't even know. I don't know. I'm not even sure story. what the conspiracy is here. So, um, first of all, I just want to say that I whenever whenever there is denialism attached to any group. So vaccine denialism moon landing denier, you know, so whenever you add denier, like moon landing denier, Holocaust denier, vaccine denier, climate change denier, I'm always skeptical of, of anybody that adds denier to anything. I think we should be allowed to question absolutely everything. I like the dichotomy there. Oh, I'm an oxygen denier. So you think we can't ask questions about everything? Like what if these two things are not related to each other at all? You can ask questions and be skeptical about everything without being a retarded conspiracy theorist. They, they don't go hand in hand. If anything, the conspiracy theorists often don't ask questions about anything. They uncritically accept uh, whatever is being spoon fed to them by whatever conspiracy theorists they enjoy watching the most. They're the least skeptical people of all time. And we should be allowed to look into absolutely everything and it shouldn't come with some sort of conspiracy theory label. Nobody would call you a conspiracy theorist or a Holocaust denier if you were genuinely curious and you did more research about it. It's because they don't do research. They look at one Google link because Alex Jones said something and then they believe every single thing they read off it. They just start parroting it uncritically because it also reinforces some other dumb fuck worldview they have. That's not a that's not a skeptical mind or a critical thinker. Instead should be met with it's healthy it's, it's, it's a healthy part of growth, exploration, learning, to be questioning everything, including atrocities that happen and questioning whether or not 
they really happen the way that victims claim that they happen. I mean, we do this in court on a regular basis, right? We were supposed to have uh, innocent until proven guilty, and you're supposed to question what the victims are saying. Innocent until proven guilty has nothing to do with any historical standard for evidence ever. What are you talking about? This has to do with the deprivation of rights by the government and why you have the trial process that, that exists. Do you think that all forms of historical evidence or archeological evidence or archive digging is done like beyond a reasonable doubt? Like that's the probability that you use for authentic, like what, a, it's just, this is, I'm sorry. This is like the dumbest comparison I've ever heard in my life. So I think, you know, we, 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 are, we are also told, by the way, when you go to the doctor, you should get a second opinion. Although these days, I'm not sure if people actually believe that anymore. But th that is, we're supposed to have healthy skepticism. So Healthy. Any, do not healthy skepticism. What do you think the healthy in that means? That is, we're supposed to have healthy skepticism. So any, denialism, I'm not really fond of this word at all. I just want to put that out there. But I want to bring up... Um, Really, the, the issue that we're seeing with Holocaust denialism right now and the, and the uh, massive uprise of this on Twitter right now is a reaction, whether, whatever you think about the Holocaust, whether you're somebody that questions the entire narrative or some of the narrative or um, you don't question it at all and you think that it's, ter it, it's, her it's horrific if people... Question the whole My favorite thing here is when she, it's the part of the video where she starts going through incredibly strong evidence that things are not as they seem. That's going to be my favorite part rather than jacking off, rather than just asking questions off. That's going to be my favorite part of this video. 17 minutes. Surely we have time. Surely we have time to do this. Holocaust, wherever you stand on it, it really is kind of a moot point on this. The point being that this is expected. This is expected when the Israelis have lied time and time and time again. And they, not only do they lie, but any time they've been caught lying or they're accused of <coughs> lying, they say, this is akin to Holocaust denialism. You don't believe in the 40 beheaded ba babies and you are a Holocaust denier. This Who, I don't think Israel ever made the 40 beheaded babies thing, but okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. This feels like the vaccine arguments. Like now the Dems are just mad because you guys got caught lying about the vaccine preventing 100%. We never said that. That's what you guys said we said. Nobody actually really said that over here. And if they did say they were corrected immediately by our side, like that's just, nobody really believed that. Except for you who said that we believed it when we don't. This is just like Holocaust denial. Anything they said was, it's, it's just equated to this all the time. So, of course, people are going to naturally question. Also, you know what? I'm sorry. What is the point of this? What is the point of showing wooden doors? Is the implication that if it's a wooden door, you should be able to break it down? I feel like we could probably find a lot of wooden doors that can't be broken down. Also, by the time you've got so much Zyklon B in your body, would you even be able to? If these pictures were even real, if these were even true pictures, it's just such a stupid it's such a stupid question. It's such a stupid point. How many people die of carbon monoxide poisoning in their bedroom with a thin door right there? Because I don't know. Whatever. It's not airtight. The gas wouldn't work because the door isn't sealed, obviously. In order for a gas like that to kill you, does it have to? Does a door have to be 100% sealed? Are we in video game world now? I don't think that your I don't think that your house is 100% sealed to the outside atmosphere, but I'm pretty sure that smoke inhalation and a fire can kill you. No. People are going to naturally question their narrative. And then when their narrative is proven false, of course, people are they're going to say, well, then now we have to start questioning the Holocaust because you've said that questioning this would be akin to Holocaust denialism. Turns out you lied. So what else have you been lying about? So if the Jews said, by the way, we believe that one plus one equals two, and then they got caught lying about something else, are you going to start questioning whether one plus one equals two anymore? Do you think that, do you think that Israel was the country making the strongest claims about like the Holocaust that happened before Israel existed? Do you think that, do you think that our understanding of the Holocaust just comes from whatever Israel has said over the past 50, 60, 70 years? Like that is a natural human reaction to the Israelis lying over and over again. In fact, if I were Jewish, I would be livid at Israel. I'd be denouncing Israel for this very reason, for the fact that they're delegitimizing absolutely every claim that Jewish people have made throughout history. Now, people are questioning everything, which, by the way, they should. I think they should question things. I'm totally fine with that. But they're questioning things more than they normally would, and sometimes in a hostile way, in ways that might be taken as you're not just being 
healthy in your skepticism and questioning whether or not these events happen because you really truly want to learn, but you're questioning and you're skeptical because you're angry. You're angry at this, at the, the Jewish state, right? Israel claims itself to be the Jewish nation for all Jewish people. And now you're questioning the word of Jewish people because you can legitimately question the word of, of Israelis. Um, for example, here is a tweet by Keith Woods where he says here, let me just pull this up for you full screen. And he says, in the past few months, I've seen Jewish Zionists say questioning 40 beheaded babies is Holocaust denial. Why are we using the most extreme retards on Twitter to define the country of Israel? Is she retarded? I literally can't tell. She's just anti-establishment. Oh, I'm sorry. She didn't say she retarded. That was, I said that. You said, is she left? I literally can't tell. She's just anti-establishment. So she'll call herself a centrist or she might even call herself a leftist or whatever, but she's just anti-establishment. Free Palestine is anti-Semitic and pointing out that Israel killed aid workers is blood libel. The anti-Semitism hoax is finished. You can't support the biggest televised slaughter in history and shut down all criticism of it with the word hate. And that's exactly right. That is what people are seeing is that, you know, Ben Shapiro comes out about the seven world um, central kitchen workers who were slaughtered. And he says, oh, it's blood libel. It's blood libel to say that uh, that that Israel did this on purpose, that they targeted these these workers when obviously it, they obviously it wasn't. Oops, we dropped a bomb in the wrong spot. It was, oh, we targeted them. Then they, they got into another car. They drove a little ways longer. We targeted them again. Their car was clearly marked. They were they told the IDF in advance exactly where they were going to be. I mean, there's they were absolutely targeted. There's just no other way to explain that. And if they were to be a an individual, if this weren't war and they were an individual and they had to go to war and they had to explain, sorry, they were individual and they had to go to court and explain how they shot at the vehicle. The victim got out, got another vehicle. They continued to shoot them. They got out of that vehicle. They got into another vehicle. They continued to shoot them. How that's not homicide. They would have to explain that in court and they would lose in court. That that wasn't just oops, mistaken manslaughter or self-defense. That was absolute homicide. And that is what Israel is in. Okay. This is the question of skepticism, by the way. Is this real? The Jewlumni? Is it? Is this real? Did he really mean the Jewlumni? You want me to read and repeat on stream. And also part of this is connecting me to kind of like a network of, they call them the Jewlumni. Is this real? The alumni? I knew it. All this time, I f knew it. Engaged in, but if you question it, and if you question whether or not those aid workers were targeted, you are committing now blood libel, which blood libel comes from the, um, the rumor a long time ago that Jewish people would uh, sacrifice or eat Christian babies. You know, that was blood libel. And now everything's blood libel, even though that had a very specific very specific meaning. Everything is Holocaust denial, even though that has a very specific meaning. So uh, we are seeing a rise of Holocaust questioning, Holocaust um, skepticism. Uh, for me personally, I think, of course, there's some exaggeration. <laughs> of course. I'm sure she's going to get into exactly what that is. Thanks for your- Wait, what is this? Destiny makes Kim Iverson very uncomfortable about Syrian funding. I don't remember this shit. Question says- I was just wondering how much the Kremlin is paying Kim Iverson for her efforts to try to split the vote in favor of Trump. Oh, here we go with Russia Gate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, loads of money. I'm becoming a millionaire as we speak. Well, to be fair, you did receive some money from a um, Syrian funded foundation, right? For some of the work that you've done. Yeah. There were, you know, I don't know where if they were funded by Syria. You know, that was something that some investigative journalists said that these people were somehow connected to Syria. You don't know? You're not curious? You wouldn't want to know that? No. Oh, where is where is all the skepticism? I'm sorry. I thought we were supposed to ask questions about everything. If it was Hunter Biden getting paid money for some shit, I bet you would know every single fucking individual donor to that particular thing. But, but for an award that you received for favorable coverage of Bashar al-Assad, by the way, I'm, I think it was related to that. Wasn't it like a, I think, wasn't Hinkle awarded this shit too? It had to do with stuff relating to uh, like outstanding journalism or some bullshit. And it was award given from some Syrian funded foundation. And all these people also think that like Assad never used chemical weapons. It was all the FSA. He didn't do anything wrong. And it's just the West trying to topple uh, poor innocent Assad's regime. 
a Syria, you know, that was something that some investigative journalists said that these people were somehow connected to Syria. Um, I won an award that was gifted to many of us independent journalists. And I was never told why I won the award, like for which coverage in particular. And I was never told to like that was it. I was never said they never influenced or said anything. I literally don't know for which coverage. I only figured out the coverage later when I actually had an opportunity to meet with one of the members of that um, of that fund. And he was Iranian and he was specifically discussing my coverage on Iran. So I don't you know, <laughs> Does that make it sound better? Bro, it wasn't fucking Putin. It wasn't fucking Assad, okay? It was the Ayatollah. Come on, bro. I'm not talking to no crazy people. I heard that, but those of us that received it said, I mean, all of us have this. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name again. Same. We, we were not even in contact. We don't know who, we didn't know anything. It was completely, um, for us, they didn't come and say, hey, we like your coverage on Syria. Here's an award. That just mm -hmm. didn't happen. They didn't say anything. This was, uh, how long ago was this debate? Four years ago, August 10th, 2020. I think with the, you know, I'm, I, I do think, of course, there's some exaggeration to the stories. Um, do, do I, there was absolutely 100%. Which stories? What were, what was exaggerated? Which ones were exaggerated? An atrocity that was committed against the Jewish people during World War II. By the way, when they say this, what they mean to say is, I think that the Holocaust is real. I think there were atrocities committed. And I think they absolutely were committed against the Jewish people. Probably 100,000 died. That's what they mean when they say that, by the way. I'll be shocked if she gives any number. I will be shocked if she gives a number. Of course, there's some exaggeration to the stories. Um, do, do I, there was absolutely 100% an atrocity that was committed against the Jewish people during World War II. I think that's undeniable. We've seen the photograph, we have photographic evidence, we have eyewitnesses, we've got logs, the Germans kept great records. We know that they committed an, a horrible, horrible atrocity against the Jewish people and any other group of people they deem to be undesirable, the Jewish people being uh, the top of that list. Now, were the numbers inflated? Was it six million? I don't know. Was it, you know, uh, did they turn Jewish people into lampshades and soap? I think that's been debunked, right? There's, there's things that I think have been exaggerated, but that is not done by just the Jewish people. That's done by the victors and the victims. And that happens in every single war that happens in that's also that's always the next prediction well she's talking about making things up afterwards but the other thing that holocaust re uh, revisionists or denialists will say also is well everybody commits atrocities during war the holocaust is just one of many but for some reason we remember that more and by some reason i mean it's the jews that are the jewry that are controlling the world governments um but they'll also point to that just everyday life whenever there's a hero the story kind of gets inflated right because the hero is she gonna bring up the ghost of kiev or whatever or the one pilot guy? Wants to sound more like a hero than they really were. The victim, uh, people want to find out what horrible thing happened to you. And then they, they ask them to tell the story and they kind of prod it and poke it into a way where, of course, it exaggerates a bit. To what level? It depends. Sometimes things are grossly, grossly exaggerated. Sometimes they're just minimally exaggerated. But of course, history is written by the victors. And so, yes, I, I think that if you're being a healthy, skeptical, logical person, you would read the history books and know that. Uh, it makes us look great as victors that saved the Jews from this horrible Holocaust if it's slightly exaggerated. It makes the Jews look more victimized if the victimized... Yes, yes, that's true. Because when historians are going through archives, they're like, it says here that when we liberated this camp, there were 250,000 Jews. What if it was 2.5 million? Wouldn't we look so much better? Let's do that. Like, yeah, fucking A, bro. Hell yeah. Hopefully nobody else comes across this document. Maybe I'll just change it. ...was horrific. More, maybe more... It's like, this is like a childlike understanding of how history like works like oh yeah the historians were doing the research doing the digging and they were like let's like pump these numbers up a bit bro let's see if we can make this a little bit better like horrific than it it, it was really horrific though I, I don't think that that's really truly disputed um but but then you know i'm probably gonna be called a holocaust denier for even just having a logical outlook of how history is written how we see just things even unfold in everyday life on an individual basis and and on larger scales of course you know and we see this with any war that we've gone in and won, it's, oh, it's, we were so great. We saved humanity from utter destruction. Really? Is that what America says about Vietnam? Is that what America says about Iraq? Is that what America's currently saying about Israel? Is that what America said about Afghanistan? Is that what, like, what, where is this idea that America rewrites every single war that we've been involved in so that it was an amazing thing? What, what, what is this, what does this come from? Any war that we've gone in and won, it's, oh, it's, we were so great. We saved humanity from utter destruction. And if it weren't for us, everything, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's the narrative that happens. That's the narrative that happens by politicians, not by historians. Politically, as they're happening, of course, you're trying to drum up support for your side. But after the dust has settled, things get a lot more honest. But. So, um, yeah, but obviously right now, there's obviously going to be a massive rise in, in, uh, 
in questioning narratives that are coming from Israelis and from Jewish people in general, because so many Jewish people support Israel. This is, again, if I were Jewish, I would, in which many, many, look, the, the loudest voices I know against Israel are Jewish people. Uh, unfortunately, they're few and far between. And that is a sad truth. There should be more outrage by the Jewish people against the state of Israel for committing these crimes in their name, claiming to be a country for them, um, claiming that anything that is questioned is blood libel and Holocaust denial. And all. I mean, they're creating anti-Semitism. Israel is creating hate and anti-Semitism. People look at what Israel's doing. It's obviously a genocide. It's obviously horrific. And people are now hating Israel. Since Israel says they are the nation of Jews for Jews by Jews, then people start to hate Jews. That creates the anti-Semitism is absolutely on the rise. It is absolutely dangerous. It is it's and it's circular, right? Because Israel says we are here as a nation created in case there's such horrible anti-Semitism that Jews have to flee. And this will be the safe place where they can flee. And during World War II, during the Holocaust, there was no safe place. Now there's a safe place. Was I safe? Uh, even though they then say, but we're surrounded by enemies and everybody wants to wipe us off the face of the earth. So they say, here we are, a home for Jews, where Jews could be safe. That has then created a rise in anti-Semitism as they have behaved in atrocious ways. Then people are starting to question the loyalty of many American Jews. I can't prove this, but it's so fucking hilarious that, like, if only it was Jews in Gaza, it, I would love to see the coverage. If it was, if the, if it was the Jewish Health Ministry pointing out like the Hamas Yeshuv, and it was like three thousand people died today, people like this would be immediately like, "Hold on, how do you know that three thousand people died? You said that you said that uh, you said that the uh, Arab Israel, you said they bombed you. Wouldn't the missiles cause the bodies to explode?" How do you know how many people were killed? Didn't you say that all the buildings were collapsing? How do you know how many people are in the rubble? How, like, you said that, didn't Israel make you guys evacuate? You said only Hamas is there? How are you guys recovering bodies? Didn't you say that all the hospitals were shut down? How do you even have the ability to process these dead bodies and identify who they are? Didn't you guys say that uh, that uh, Israel was preventing you guys from keeping good records and your ability to even uh, be administrators to this region was constantly compromised by all the blockades and everything else? How do you have such good record keeping that you can keep track of every single individual that died? You said there's two million people, this many people have moved? How do you know you're not just missing someone? You said over a million people moved to South Gaza. How do you know that you're not just missing a Jew or two? How do you know that they're actually dead? There's no way you could. Do you have blood records? Like if it was if it was Jewish people dying in Gaza, bro, there would be 50 billion questions about how all of these numbers come out. And they're like, oh, God, like, how do you trust or believe any of this? But since it's like since it's Jews doing the killing, it's like, well, obviously, I'm going to uncritically accept literally every single possible thing that's said here with absolutely no question whatsoever. But then when it comes to the Holocaust, or World War II, that's probably had, if I had to guess in my slightly educated opinion, my guess would be that World War II on the macro is probably the most studied event in literally all of human history. That'd be my guess. Probably more eyes, more historians, more archives, just because of the sheer number of countries involved, the sheer number of dead involved, and the sheer number of, um, and the sheer number of records and archives kept by everybody uh, because of the time period it happened. My guess is World War II is probably the most studied event in all of human history. And the idea that like, eh, who the f knows? Give me a fucking break, bro. Jews, rightfully, in my opinion, questioning their loyalty when they so obviously are are way more uh, protective and outspoken. And you know, like, look at Ben Shapiro, who criticizes the United States endlessly, but never criticizes Israel. Have you ever heard a single criticism of Israel come out of Ben Shapiro's mouth? Yet you will hear numerous criticisms of the United States. And what happens? You can you can work for the Daily Wire and criticize the United States till you're blue in the face. Maybe he just likes Israel. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, like. Isn't that possible? Like, how many times has AOC or how many times has like Rashid Talib criticized? Um, I don't even know what fucking country. Uh, was it Somalia and New Somalia? Was it Rashid Talib or was it? Um, oh no, Ilhan Omar. How many times has Ilhan Omar criticized uh, Somalia? Like, she, they're, these are Americans. They're American people in the United States of America. I don't know if I would expect them to have a ton of criticisms for like the domestic policy of other countries. Like what? Like, <clears throat> it's Rashida, not Rashid. Oh, sorry. Case, but you cannot criticize Israel and keep your job. That's what Candace Owens learned. So people are rightfully looking at- Was Candace Owens fired because she criticized Israel? Or was Candace Owens fired for like doing weird Nazi apologia or Nazi propaganda? Like- Size the United States so you're blue in the face, but you cannot criticize Israel and keep your job. That's what Candace Owens learned. So people are rightfully looking at people like Ben Shapiro, who is an American citizen and wondering, are you really though? Or are you actually uh, really an agent for the state of Israel pretending and masquerading as an American citizen? And, and maybe you should be living somewhere else or maybe you should at least be labeled. Uh, outright labeled. I mean, look, if people working for RT are being labeled as Russian state media, then why aren't people like ben RT is by definition Russian state media. It is funded and the agenda is dictated to it by Russia. It is by definition Russian state media. What are you talking about? You're going to compare the Daily Wire to Russia today to RT? It's technically what it's called. Uh, outright labeled. I mean, look, if people working for RT are being labeled as Russian state media, then why aren't people like Ben Shapiro being labeled as Israeli state? 
Maybe. Because the Daily Wire is not state funded by the country of Israel and is not taking a media diet or not taking a media uh, order uh, by the Israeli government. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that is something that so so people are starting to question the loyalty of Jews. People are starting to question the, the honesty of Jews. People are starting to question, um, you know, these, these the, the history of Jews. All of these things are being questioned. It's a natural reaction from the atrocities that Israel's creating and committing in Palestine and it, of course it's on the rise. Of course it's on the rise. Some of it's healthy skepticism. Some of it is just anger and that anger manifesting in terrible ways. And it could manifest to a point of really horrific anti-Semitism, which maybe is Israel's goal because they are trying to build a nation that is majority Jew. And right now, if they were to force to be a one state with... They, they already have a nation that's majority Jew. Okay. And giving all, citizen, all the Palestinian citizenship, they'd be 50-50. They would lose their Jewish character. They would no longer be a Jewish nation. But if you can create anti-Semitism around the world and get Jews to want to flee to the one safe place that you've created for them, and you dominate the region, you flood it in with population, then uh, you end up with the Jewish nation, even if you give all the Palestinians citizenship. If you have 80% um, Jews and 20% Palestinians, then there's no real threat to the Jewish character of your nation. Same thing that's like the Christian character of the United States. And that could be the goal. <laughs> what? <sighs> the, the Jewish character of Israel isn't... It's not it's not really even the the Jewish religious aspect. It's the protection of the ethnic identity. Um, oh God. Okay. Is that, then there's no real threat to the Jewish character of your nation. Same thing. That's like the Christian character of the United States. And that could be the goal. Is that the goal? It's, again, healthy skepticism, healthy questioning. Ask the questions. Is that what Israel's trying to do? Are they trying to fear monger people and to where they run off and help build the state of Israel as they've so. Uh, they're absolutely hell bent on building the state of Israel. They've made that clear and they've somehow gotten our government to help in that by giving them endless amounts of money year after year, not only in wartime, but in peacetime as well, claiming to constantly be in wartime. American politicians can't speak out against Israel. You can't even be in media and speak out against Israel. I mean, um, they've, they've basically coerced us somehow, one way or the other, into building a nation for them. Not our nation, but their nation. I just want to play this clip for you. This is Andrew. We're building, we build, we're building Israel. By giving them endless amounts of money year after year, not only in wartime, but in peacetime as well. I mean, to constantly be endless amounts of money in wartime. American politicians can't speak out against Israel. You can't even be in media and speak out against Israel. I mean, um, they've, they've basically coerced us somehow, one way or the other, into building <laughs> somehow, one way or another, a nation for them. Not our nation, but their nation. I just want to play this clip for you. This is Andrew Schultz. He's a comedian, popular comedian. He called out Ben Shapiro, and he's kind of reiterating also what I'm saying here to you. Uh, check this out. He makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term I have in my phone. But he, I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this, uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window. Yeah, because as an employer, yes, an employer is not going to employ all points of view because they've got a particular point of view that they defend. That doesn't have anything to do with the freedom of speech that the government guarantees you. <sighs> You're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes. speech. And facts don't care about your feelings and all this it's shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? You say it's not funny at all. He's a part owner of the company. That actually makes perfect fucking sense. That, uh, that's actually one of the most understandable fucking things in the world. That actually makes more sense than literally any other thing could possibly be. Like... <sighs> Yeah. Not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So, I just so don't you see. You can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Crazy. I was so is the Daily Wire an American media platform or is it an Israeli oh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. <laughs> it's, it's probably Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring's media platform. It's those two. They own the business. So whatever their political views are going to be, there's going to be an acceptable window that they have for other people they have. They're probably not going to hire an insanely like LGBTQIA plus whatever person. Probably wouldn't do that or somebody pushing those beliefs as well. Probably not because it probably doesn't fit into the window of views that they would want to propagate to an audience. It's their company, obviously. Funny how Israel revising death numbers is seen as them lying, but it really just shows working institutions, but Gaza not shows how truthful they are true. I'm just saying, get that, get that, get that. I'm just, no, if, if the rule Duh. is, I'm just saying, if the Go rule ahead. is you cannot be critical because he's no problem being very critical of America. Yep. Dustin, you predicted that this large of a spike in anti-Semitism was even possible a few years ago. Have you done any recalibrating or censors of this type of stuff? It's completely blindsided me. Uh, I don't know what I said in the past about it. Who knows? Maybe. Viscerating half That's of the, the country. That's the current power in, party in power. But you can't criticize Israel as a country. That's just another country. Unless you're saying, and you're clearly admitting that the Daily Wire is an arm of the Israeli I guess media or propaganda machine. Is that? Oof. 
Are you manipulating the, the religious right in America? Are you manipulating Ooh. the right-wing conservatives in America? And so you understand that conservatives have been pro-Israel way, way, way before the Daily Wire ever existed, or Ben was even fucking born. Like, Manipulating the, the religious right in America? Are you manipulating Ooh. the right-wing conservatives in America and selling them country western movies and putting on your little cowboy hat and fake moving to Nashville so that you two could take all their money and then in the process restricting free speech, one of the core tenets of the American identity? Ben, Ben. Free speech. Freedom of speech is when an employer is forced to hire every single type of employee regardless of the ideological view they have when they literally run an ideologically driven platform for politics. That's what freedom of speech means. Ben. Oof. Benjamin, Ben. What is happening? <laughs> There's trouble in paradise. <laughs> It's always like when people are like, oh, you can't even question anything about the Holocaust. Of course you can. What do you mean? You probably have a ton of, we could probably do a whole two weeks of research on the Holocaust. I'm sure we could do that. It'd be fine. But there's a difference between being like, <laughs> whenever somebody's like, I genuinely just have questions about the Holocaust. Really? For how long? I don't know. For like four or five months, I have questions. Okay. Well, what are your questions? Well, like, did 6 million really die? Well, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It seems like it's hard to track that many people dying. Oh, well, do you know how they did it? No. Do you know where that number comes from? No. Do you know what the records are like? No. Do you know like when most of them were killed? No. Do you know how they were killed? Gas chambers? All of them? Most of them? Uh, I don't know. Okay. If you have all these questions, and you've had all these questions for months, and you haven't done any research into it, seems like you don't have any questions at all. Seems like you're not actually curious. Seems like you don't actually give a fuck. You're just asking questions to spread a conspiracy. That's it. That's all you're doing. And this is every single person that has questions about the Holocaust. Motherfucker, Wikipedia is free, okay? The Google is free, all right? Libraries are free, right? Look up an article, check out a book, take an elective in college, fucking Jesus. Like there's so many different ways to find the answers to your questions out there. How do you have no idea about any of these things that you've supposedly just been asking questions about for a year or two or 10? Like, here you are calling out Sneeko on that. You just don't understand what asking the question is like. Like you, you understand you can do a lot of like damage by asking certain types of questions. Question is anti-Semitic. Okay, if I were to walk around and I were to ask, is that like, what you're saying? Are, are you saying asking question is anti-Semitic? It can be part of it. Yeah. If I were, that's, to, that's absolutely insane, and that's that's how free speech dies. If I were to walk it, around, if I were to walk, no, 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 you're the one killing freedom of speech. Okay, because right. you're not asking real questions. You're playing word games. Because if you were asking real questions, like how do they know how many Jews died, you wouldn't even ask me that. That's a Google search away. That's literally two minutes of reading. You haven't even done that. So you're not really asking questions. You're making points. You're disguising those points with question marks, and that's why people are claiming it's anti-Semitic. Free speech no, dies not when we can't ask questions. Never, it's when people pretend to ask questions, and bad faith actors destroy the discourse, and we can't have no. free speech anymore. Yeah, that's you're assuming by me asking a question that I'm making a statement that's grossly exaggerated. That's never. But right. you are. You, okay. I genuinely, I genuinely. Do you think that? Okay. Do you think that it's the case that maybe way more Jews died in the in the Holocaust? That's possible. Okay, what do you think is more likely, more Jews or less Jews? If Jewish people are using this story to drum up support for Israel and Jewish people, would they exaggerate it or would they underplay it? I don't think there's a way to know. Oh my and God. I, I'm not leaning on either side. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, anything else you want to go over? You can kill me, bro. In society, you don't have an answer. So it must be a conspiracy. There must be some sort. And you're just asking questions. You don't know. Right? This is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators. Just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I think you missed my super chat. Hey, Destiny, are you and Amy Dangerfield still cool? To my understanding is we are, yes. I don't have to tell you who the problem is. Wink, wink. But I can just tell you right now that there is a problem. But even if, and, and if I'm asked about it, Hey, I'm just asking questions. Now, let me tell you something about just asking questions for a second. Just asking questions is a game for children. My son is seven. He can just ask questions. My daughter is 10. She can just ask questions. If you are 50 and you are just asking questions, I don't think you're just asking questions. I think that your level of curiosity is actually quite low. I think that you don't care enough to know or know enough to care. I think that the vast majority of people who are in the just asking questions business have an answer that they want to suggest, but they know there's no evidence for it, so instead they hide behind. What did it take to get him over here? Oh my God, we're getting the Jews back to the center left, and it's because Ben Shapiro sees the Israel shit happening. But like, bro, you cast your lot with Trump. You're in the ultimate jacking off crowd. This is the ultimate crowd of just asking questions. Just asking questions. In other words, they're completely full of Damn. Is he allowed to say swear words with the yarmulke on? What else is happening? What's on Twitter? What's trending on Twitter? Can we see Chris? I like how that's only 
What else is happening? What's on Twitter? What's trending on Twitter? Wait, what is this title? But nah, guys, he's not anti-Semitic. I don't think I've ever taken a strong stance on this. I said he said things in the past that seemed like ultra super sus about it, but he's like so many layers of irony, I'm not sure. What? Do I not have a mod on this again? Hold on. See ya. Only the thing Twitter's good for. What's trend, what's trending? Not missing something. Well, I think Twitter's great. I think it's I think it's everything that it's uh, it's getting there. Uh, what's Amy Schumer doing? Is she doing some? Wow, is that Sui? Th or is that Sui? Thanks for the five good subs, buddy. She's I've trending. never given money. <laughs> Damn. Uh, what has Amy Schumer said? This is this is not going away. What is not? This Israel Palestine thing. It's it's really setting the. Brazilian against the left. Wait, is this an update? This is cute. The little line thing. Isn't that good? I mean, it's, it's as a as a. You don't think they'll me. contain it? I think it's. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going away, man. What you think? Like leftists are going to be going at pro -Jew. Brazilian. Yeah, because the the Palestinian the Palestinian side is the brown underdog oppressed side that the leftists are sort of gravitating towards. And they're now like... They're Frankensteins beating them back. Yeah, the, go the golem is fighting back now. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. So like the... And there's... Frankly, the left is saying and doing things that are downright anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't... I'm, I'm, I've been asleep the whole time on this thing. I'm just like, ah, it's boring. I, I mean, avoid it, yeah. Yeah. Dude. But uh, what did it say? Hold on. Did something I post about my people being massacred upset you? My people being massacred? Yeah, the my people thing is fucking unbelievable. I, they Brazilian. Just wake up and stop talking <clears throat> like that. No, they're they not gonna, it's not going to happen. I know. What, what, is it, what is it about, like, the, uh, I don't understand it. Like, uh, I would never, like, we've, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Catholic boy. Mm -hmm. It's not a religion. It's not a religion. I'm a Canadian thing. boy. It's an ethnic, uh, it's an ethnic thing. They, they have the highest, good God, that is Right, that is hot. a chilling, mm. that is a frightening visage. I wish I saw her in real life. I try to f her and I call my Jesus wife. Jesus Christ! Like, hey, just, is it cool if I try to f me Schumer? She'd be like, Yeah, go ahead, have it. They have so the highest in-group loyalty, and they have a high enough IQ to disguise that um, that in-group loyalty quite quite well. I guess I think in-group loyalty is fucking. Cool. Well, um, I mean, there's a case to be made for that, but. Unfortunately, if you don't have high in-group loyalty, you are you get eliminated genetically doomed yeah. to be you, to be eradicated from the face of the earth as a group. Really? Yeah. As a group, though. Mm hmm. Okay. Just the, just ancient ancient biblical warfare is still happening to this day, just under different names. It's it's, just, it's, it's tribal it's tribal warfare, and it's it's. Uh, what is happening? Well, he's running through. These are like all of the. These are all just like Nazi talking points, basically. Um, yeah, that Jews have high in-group loyalty, um, that they are super high IQ so they can mask it, and that they use this to collaborate in ways that allows them to kind of control society to weaken other ethnic groups while still maintaining the hegemonic superiority of their own ethnic group. So Jews give handouts to other Jews. Jews are really favorable towards their um, fellow people while they control like the levers of society um, and their positions of power, but simultaneously they'll enact policies like open borders or big immigration or whatever the fuck to weaken like the white man's presence in wherever the fuck they are, whoever they're fighting against. Um, it's unavo It's kind of seems unavoidable. I think it's unavoidable, the, f the fact that there's, that tribal warfare is a thing. I mean, it happens in nature all the time. It happens with fucking trees do it. Trees mm. have, trees, trees favor other trees with their, they share nutrients, I think, mm -hmm. and they favor trees that are more genetically similar to them than, true. than trees that are not. Yeah, so like birch trees don't that's fuck just, with any of the trees. That's just the way of, uh, that's just the way of nature. And um, white people, I think, uh, are uh, currently getting beat down pretty pretty hard with um, um, white guilt, and that's why they have this lowered in one reason why they have this oh that's another thing too that Jewish authors the white guilt and everything originates from Jewish authors who are writing in order to make white people come down on themselves because it's the easiest way to destroy that group of people lowered in group loyalty I think for now for we'll now, see if it'll yeah. change I mean, we'll see but I guess the qu the question is, is like uh. You went, when you say it's not going away, right? 
Uh, how do you see it like man, playing out? You think it, we're just gonna get dragged into th three? I don't know. I think I think it's if I was if I was Brazilian, I'd be pretty fucking worried right now. Because <clears throat> on Twitter, Brazilians are getting like dragged. Like Twitter is like the Nazi. It's like not Nazi. Nazi. What a fuck. It's fucking. It's leftists that are that are doing. Twitter is like. Uh, in in my opinion, in my opinion, Twitter is a pretty. It's it seems pretty well representative of what people actually think now. Um, Jesus. And uh, this is not true. Twitter still skews way too young, way too white, um, and way too affluent. I, I don't. I haven't seen any compelling piece of evidence that uh, shifts that, that shifted my perspective on that. Whether you whether you like it or not, I've the the black people that I follow on Twitter, the white people, the the uh, racists that I follow on Twitter, the stuff that they're saying, it does it doesn't seem like there's anything really out of whack, like any there's any any messages that are getting boosted too much on. Sam, it's just funny. Why do your retarded Why do your retarded community care if he's anti-Semitic? Well, if he's actually racist or actually a Nazi, it makes a lot of jokes hit a lot different. It's not really as funny. I think that the way that you get laughs is very, very, very dependent upon the, um, it's very, very, very dependent upon the ideas that you have. When people talk about like the old internet, and it's hard to know how much of this is true versus not true, but it's just, this is just the feeling. I think when people talk about the old internet, people that were on the old internet probably tended to skew quite a bit more intelligent, quite a bit more nerdy, um, probably a bit more kind of left-leaning because like these are just like, I think that of all the people that are like online, this is just probably what you're gonna run into in general, like younger people, um, techie people or whatever, as opposed to like more conservative types in general. Um, not to say that everybody was like this, but when you're making edgy jokes online, like the, the funny thing is supposed to be, the reason why it's funny is because of how bad what you're saying is. Right. So like if somebody was looking at a picture, like it is just using as a whatever example, somebody's a few people looking at a picture like, okay, well describe this guy. And some guys like, well, he looks like an N word. Right. The reason why that would be funny is because it's such a, it's an obviously abhorrent thing to say. Like it's, and it's just like, Jesus, fuck. Like it's funny because of how bad it is to say this thing. But if you're with a bunch of people who are like genuinely racist and that same type of joke comes up and it's like, oh, what's wrong with this guy? And it's like, oh, because he's an N-word, right? Now it's funny because like, oof, if anybody else heard her saying that, we'd be in like big trouble and you'd like get busted for that or whatever. But like fucking A, right? It's it's different. And I think that when you're in mixed groups of people, this is why I stopped saying fag as like an insult in 2013 generally, unless I'm really mad in league. Um, when you're with different types of people who genuinely harbor certain views towards other types of people, it just, it makes edgy humor feel a lot different because now you don't know if the joke is that like, well, this is so extreme and obviously horrible that it's funny versus you're laughing about this because this is a truth that you can't say, right? Those are two way different things. Like unspoken truths can be very funny, um, but it's a different type of funny than like being extreme or doing something that's obviously horrible, right? On Twitter, like out of proportion to to way the way people feel, and it just seems the vibe, the temperature right now, is that people really don't like jokes. Brazilian, mm. and it's uh, it seems like it's getting safer and safer to say that, and um, like this model. Never thought I'd see the day. I never thought I'd see the day. This model comparing Israel to Nazis. It's 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 Israel that they they say the issues with, but it's Israel is Brazilian. Um, so you know, if I if I was just not looking good, man, if I was Brazilian, I'd be worried. Good. That's, that's Do you think it's weird how much internet culture was popularized by 4chan? Maybe, but even on I can't speak as much to 4chan because I was I was never on 4chan that much, um, and I was never a regular on any of the boards. What I've heard said, I don't, I just don't know. But what I've heard said is the Trump time changed the political stuff of 4chan quite a bit. That like even the politics board was for like. It was like for a lot of like edgy racist humor, shit posting and stuff like that. But after the Trump stuff started to get really popular, um, especially when like the Donald and shit was banned on Reddit, that the people on the politics board, they were still edgy and everything, but they started to become way more politically serious. That before it was like, yeah, we're racist and horrible, and blah, blah, blah. And we talk shit about politics, but it's like a lot of it is like with the understanding that like, yeah, this is extreme and crazy as opposed to the serious 4chan posters. Like... And again, um, this is only going by like vibes I get from reading a ton of uh, 
other people to talk about their signature because I was never, I, I never saw on 4chan a lot. But like if QAnon happened on 4chan in like 2013, my impression is that like if you were posting shit like that on 4chan, everybody would troll the fuck out of you for being fucking retarded or they would believe you to, because it would be funny because it's retarded. That's why they would like, oh yeah, Q is definitely real and he's going to drop this, blah, blah, blah. But after 2016, people on 4chan on the po politics boards in those threads, they actually believed that Q was real. It was a, it was a real thing. Uh, and they truly, genuinely believed it. I think, I think actually, even on Reddit, I think the Donald originally started off, I think, as a troll subreddit. And then it actually, there were so many true Trump fans that showed up that it became less ironic and more serious. Um, but I don't know firsthand experience for much of that. So I, the, all of that might be fake. That's what I mean, but it's not going away. <laughs> Good. Welcome to the party. That's the only thing you can say. Well, I mean... Who, I mean, is it, are they really gonna like are like American Brazilians? Like, is Amy? Not, nothing's gonna happen to them. Uh, well, no, that's not true. Oh, I think a few of them get canceled. Amy Amy Schumer's not gonna be killed, but this whole everything is inter interdependent on everything else. And uh, what is considered old internet? Um, I would say probably at around the time hate speech stuff started to get enforced. Probably like a little bit after twenty ten. I think there was a point where, like, even in StarCraft games on Battle of the Night, you could call people, like, <laughs> you could call people racial slurs. And I don't think there, it was never, nothing would happen to your account. It just nobody cared back then. It was insane. Um, but I think probably around, what, 20, probably like 2015, 2014 and onwards, I think a lot of different platforms started to crack down a lot more on hate speech and everything. And then things started to change a lot. Not that that's bad, by the way. I think it's, I think, I mean, like, there's pros and cons to everything. Like, we're allowed to be less edgy and more extreme, but it's, there's a lot more people on it now. There's more money to be made. It's more inclusive to a lot of different types of people. Um, yeah. I don't know when the exact date or around you'd point to a changing event. For, I mean, fucking 100 years, uh, the, the G have kind of controlled media or been at, been at the position of the, the highest position of power in, in media. I'm ceasing to see the, um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm stupid. Remember, I'm the mayonnaise guy, so. There's a big ball in my head. Why well, it's a bad thing? Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just oh, saying it's, it's, a, it's, oh, it's a, there's a huge, it's, it feels like there's a huge change uh, brewing. Mm, oh, yeah. And it's just what, like, ooh, ooh, freaky. See, I guess I saw it like that the whole time. Mm -hmm. I feel like people could have saw that the whole time, and I guess I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was expecting, like, the plumbers and everybody to be like, come on, and then you're like, like yo, you don't know what's going on Hollywood? And they're like, what? Mm -hmm. I watch Rain Texas Ranger, and you're like, oh shit, I didn't even know. Oh, I'm on the retard side. Mm -hmm. I just assume it's everything's intentional. I have a different sort of take on these things. I assume that the the allowing of the of this this pushback to happen is intentional and will just will push backs closer to the wall and make the repri reprisal more extreme. I just assume everything is scripted. You know. How well, I think Jesus, this is like so much Jesus Christ. I mean, if yeah. you, when you assume that everything's intentional and scripted, what you're assuming is that people have that someone somewhere has the ability to perfectly plan something. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And what what have we ever planned that's gone even fifty percent? The way that we, that we thought it would. I guess nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> nothing. And like even like World Peace Two was successful, but it's not. It wasn't successful because anybody planned it that mm. way. It was successful because ingredients and like things came together organically, and we didn't. We hadn't lost our edge. Mm. And, um, and we worked hard. And I don't. I don't mean a commercial success, but I just mean the product, the, st the stuff that we've shot. The, yeah. The stage that it's in right now, mm. it's it's safe to say that artistically it's a success. But it's not. It's not because of planning. It's yeah, not. It's not, like the it just you know, you know you know the shots we get. Like everything's a fucking accident. Everything's yeah. everything is in a fucking accident, man. Um. <clears throat> so like. Uh, and that's that's in a studio with actors that we're paying and cameramen that we're directing. Like this is in a, a con, like as controlled of an environment as possible. Um, that's just I, I've never I've never seen uh, anything in my entire life where someone planned something and it went eighty percent of that the way that they thought it was going to go. Right? Mm. Yeah. And um, it's it seems more likely to me that if you were cre if you were in control of media, academia, etc., and you can you created this um, sort of like phalanx of useful idiots and people to people to um intimidate and criticize and shut down shut down free speech you created this like the woke leftist stuff you caused that to come into being mm -hmm. um it's it just aligns with everything that i've everything i've read in like greek tragedy etc like it just it makes sense that it would turn on them eventually but now i think I f it feels like it feels like we are seeing the fucking the golems the fucking golem story yep happening right right now prog prog golem i don't know the golem story what is this <laughs> What's get some Nazi shit I'm getting for <laughs> sounds like it. What is the golem story? I'm coming back, yep. Huh. The leftist thing feels like a biblical golem that they've yep. created and it feels like it's turning on its on its master now. Okay. That's what it feels like. I don't mean I don't know what that's Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Well I, I I definitely I don't argue with irrefutable logic and I'm here to learn, so but I just think in like these biblical and I'm not Mr. Bible or warfare, it's just uh I just it's irrefutable, the logic of what you said, so it makes sense. But your your take is that it's you suspect that there's some that the powers that be somehow this is part of the 
plan that they're going to flip I, it. I assume it's part of the plan because the powers that be have no names and they're not of this world. So it's it's hard to um it's hard to assume that these things that I mean look I'm just theorizing but if they're if they're taking DMT they're talking to the freaking the jesters on the other side. These- Golem story is a Jewish folktale. Golem is a neo-Nazi shibboleth they call minorities and leftist golems puppets of the Jews. These things are, I mean, this is just speculative, but these things are, you know. It's that a Jewish scientist dude created a golem out of clay, and eventually the golem killed its master. Alive for a million years or something like that. Like, mm. uh, these, I just, Wait, that sounds awesome. What story is that? Why don't we have crazy shit like that in Christianity? Is this like part of the Torah, or is this just like some passed down verbal shit, or what? Don't assume the overlords that are strong enough to conquer a world make mistakes. But that's what I'm, I'm down with logic, too. I enjoy, I kind of enjoy how things are kind of seesawing a little bit. Well, when I, when I start, to, start to suspect that, what I, what I think is, why is their domination not more complete? It's just to, to create a world of, uh, of happy slaves is, is necessary. Like, it can't always be uh, a fighting thing. You have to get people to be down with it and then happy with it. Otherwise, they don't co- cooperate and you straight up have to kill them. You can't. At least Sam looks like he understands grand conspiracy plans are not very likely. I mean, he just says they don't always go as planned, but he, what, he, Sam, he sounds like he 1 billion percent fully believes every single crazy talking point about Jewish people running the world, though. <laughs> corral them. Hmm. That's what it, it seems like to me. Like, every, like how everyone's down with everything in Hollywood and even taxes and stuff <clears> like that. Plane tickets, paying for gas forever, space, the space project, freaking the budget, trillions and trillions of dollars. It just, uh, if you get people down with that and you make, you make their lives so miserable, they don't even have time to think of how bad their life is. It's, it seems like that's more of a, an infallible plan than outright like brutality or military force. Mm-hmm. That's just how I assume that these Bible, these Bible things work because it's been going on for a couple thousand years. Allegedly. I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense too. Imagine if this was all for harvesting Coca-Cola piss. <sighs> Nothing surprises me. Oh, like uh, Anunnaki Coca Cola piss. Uh, mm-hmm. Joe Rogan talks about it being gold. What Coca Cola piss? Like they keep us all. They keep us all. You know, like why would they? Why wouldn't it be more complete? Like why wouldn't a total? Uh, it would be easy for them if it was like that. They could snap their fingers and be able to like end game this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 